Welcome back to Crawford Clark Close Up as we continue our season reviewing every Pixar film leading up to their 20th The Incredibles 2 due for release this summer. For Pixar's 17th feature film we have another sequel, this time to 2003's Finding Nemo with Dory taking centre stage. Finding Dory after the huge success of Finding Nemo in 2003, the first Pixar film to win the Oscar for Best Animated Feature, it was surely inevitable that we'd one day see a return of these characters in the not-too-distant future. Eight years after his work on WALL-E, director Andrew Stanton would return to these beloved characters as director on Finding Dory. The film begins as a prequel. The first face we see is baby Dory with her parents encouraging her that she must tell people when she meets them that she suffers from short-term memory loss. Until we flash forward to Dory, voiced again by the brilliant Ellen DeGeneres, waking Nemo and Marlin. Back is Albert Brooks as the cautious Marlin and director Andrew Stanton gets to reprise his role as Crush, the turtle, for an all-too-brief sequence. Eugene Levy provides the voice of Dory's father, Charlie, and Diane Keaton voices mother, Jenny, in short sequences. The other significant new character is Hank, given life by Ed O'Neill, who becomes a close ally to Dory as she remembers that she is estranged from her parents and must recruit everyone she can to try and find them. Once again, this is a case of Pixar boosting a side character from a first film to the protagonist of the sequel. Think Mater in Cars and Cars 2, only their attempt is more successful second time around. Sigourney Weaver also returns to lend her voice to Pixar as the voice of the Marine Life Institute, where Dory gets captured by humans. Director Stanton worked with Weaver on Wally in 2008. Whilst Finding Dory doesn't have half of the fun, humour and thrills of its prede predecessor, it is a fun romp and works well as a sequel to one of Pixar's most popular films. Unlike its predecessor, however, Dory would lose out on the animation Oscar in 2016 to the superior Zootopia in the same category. Thomas Newman returns 13 years on as the film's composer, maintaining the fun and energy he brought to proceedings in the predecessor and punctuating the comic beats particularly well. There are some amusing set pieces in Dory, the best being the scene where Dory and Hank commandeer a truck on the freeway to try and rescue Dory's parents, and the Crawford Clark close-up standout scene is Dory managing to find her parents who are laying shells down for her return which is a genuinely touching moment in what is essentially a lacklustre sequel. In a market dominated by sequels, it's a shame that the once innovative Pixar relies so heavily on sequels to their previous successes these days. Whilst Finding Dory isn't necessarily a bad film, it's a distinctly average follow-up in comparison to its great predecessor. We need fresh new stories and characters now, please, Pixar. From Crawford Clark Close Up, our verdict on Finding Dory. Take a chance on me. Sorry. So, what are your thoughts on Finding Dory? How does the sequel compare to the original? And was the sequel even necessary? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you like this review, please subscribe to the channel. You can search Crawford Clark Close Up on Facebook and Twitter and come join our social media community for all the latest updates on the channel. You can also send us an email if you're so inclined, crawfordclarkcloseup at gmail.com. Let us know your suggestions for future reviews. Pixar are about to come of age with their 18th feature, the threequel that everyone wanted, Cars 3. Could we be about to be surprised? Be sure to stay tuned for the next review in our Pixar season to find out what we think. Thanks for watching, and until next time, that's a wrap.